On the 14th of March 2018, the world lost a significant figure in the world of science, Stephen Hawking, who successfully battled a debilitating disease which left one of the most celebrated minds in theoretical physics and cosmology a prisoner in his own body for over 50 years, way beyond the life expectancy any doctor predicted he would have back in 1963, and who became a pop culture phenomenon in his own right, due to his down-to-earth sense of humour and modesty of his own intellectual prowess. His death was a great loss. But it overshadowed another man's demise on the same day who was less well known but for me personally is someone I have fond memories of whilst growing up in the late 80s and early 90s, Jim Bowen. Jim Bowen was primarily known as the host of the game show Bullseye which aired between 1981 to 1995 and combined the sports of darts with a general knowledge quiz show. With its working class appeal, as anyone could pick up a set of darts and play, along with the warmth and down to earth humour of Jim himself. This led to the quiz show amassing a weekly viewership of over 12 million viewers, my family included. Together with Tony Green, the official scorekeeper, who was himself a professional darts referee and commentator in his own right, Jim would set three teams of two, one a darts player and one to answer the questions, against each other to see who could amass the most points in order to have a chance at Buddy's prize board, renowned for its mixture of rubbish prizes and quality swag, before deciding on whether to risk it all on Buddy's star prize by throwing 101 in six darts. I have very fond memories of being a child at 6 or 7 years old, going to my grandparents every Sunday and meeting up with the entire family for Sunday lunch, usually after going to watch my uncle play football for the local pub team with my granddad and great uncle, and then the whole clan sitting down at 5pm to watch Bullseye together before everyone would go their separate ways to prepare for the week ahead. For me, especially as I get older, these were cherished times and now with streaming sites such as Netflix and on demand entertainment from the likes of YouTube, it seems the sanctity of sitting with your family at the same time every week to enjoy a TV programme together, any programme, is becoming more obscure with every passing year. This in itself is a tragedy in my eyes, but a minor negative in the grand scheme of things taking into consideration the amount of choice and variety you have at your fingertips in these modern times. Jim Bowen's passing is a closing of a chapter to my life which I assumed was closed long ago, through the natural progression of a child becoming a teenager and wanting, needing that independence from the family unit. But with getting older and being able to look back at those times, I can now see that this was truly a treasured time of life for me. So I have chosen to celebrate the life of Jim and honour his passing the only way I know how, and that is to play the Commodore 64 version of his highly popular and widely regarded game show. Probably badly. And remember, you can't beat a bitter bully. And here we are, Bullseye for the Commodore 64. So it, much like in the game show, this game does follow the basic premise of said game show, he says in a long winded kind of way. We have three different rounds and then we have the final round. The first round is based upon choosing a category and trying to get the dart into the same section of the dartboard for that category. And depending on how close you get to the bullseye, you get to answer a question on that category. If you choose a wrong category or you get your dart into the wrong category you have chosen, uh, then you get to not get any points for that dart, but you can answer the question of that other category. If your, your dart lands in a category which has already been chosen and answered, then you get no choice, you get no chance of getting any points or anything. Now, the only difference between the game and the game show is that in the game you play for points, whereas in the game show it's obviously money and prizes and whatnot and uh yeah that's pretty much it we'll crack on it now it is a very basic version of bullseye as far as a computer game is concerned and especially as as far as a commodore 64 game is concerned there's not a, a great deal of sophistication to this as far as graphics or sound is concerned so just bear with us it, it, this is a nostalgia trip all right so <laughs> so here we go let's crack on now the one thing i need to mention he says as he presses space, is that this is primarily a two-player game. You cannot play against the CPU on this version. So that means, because it's only little old me here, I'm going to be playing against myself. So, first things first, I need to name myself, Padge. And for player two, we are going to go with my darker alter ego, Palico. 
Now, before I press enter, I just want to show you that level of difficulty bar at the bottom. This is how long you get to answer a question. And now, it, um, for some reason, again, I don't know why, but the developers of this game decided that instead of using what used to be like QA and OP as your movement buttons, uh, you actually control the arm that's going to throw the dart by pressing the shift buttons. Now that also applies to this screen as well. If I was to press the right shift, that bar fills up and it puts the level of difficulty down, believe it or not. The more that bar fills up, the more time you get to answer the question. I never play with the bar going up simply because as far as I'm concerned, if you know an answer to a question, you know an answer. You can at least have an educated guess. If you don't have a clue, you don't have a clue. There's no point extending that time because it's fairly generous as it is anyway. So we'll leave it as it stands right there. So we're into the first round where we have to answer the categories. Let's see how that goes. As I said, it is very, very basic. So we have our categories going around the board labeled A to J. You change these by pressing the F1 and F2 key. So the first one is books. Then we have history, mythology, Bible. Let's move that hand out of the way by pressing the left shift. Make it nice and even. I'm a bit OCD like that. We then have places, art, sport, food, showbiz, and pot look. So general knowledge, as it were. If you get it in the outside rings, you get 30 points. The second or the middle rings is 50 the tiny rings are going around the bullseye i believe is 100 and the bullseye is 200 if you hit the bullseye you can answer the question on on that category easily but as i said before if you if you get the dart in the wrong category then the, there is a, a slight penalty to it so with me not really being that much up on my 80s knowledge which is when this was based uh, we're going to go with Potluck first, because we're going to try and get Padge to win. Palico is the dark alter ego. He's not supposed to win. Padge is the four-fight winner here. Now, this is where my big gripe of this game comes across. And it's simply because that when you throw the dart, you have to hold down space to do the strength, which is fine. So you think, right, I'm going to put the dart here. I'm going to aim for the 50. Now, when you press the button and you fire that dart, sometimes, and not every time, and there's no way to calculate why it does it or... Um, what you can do to sort of counteract it the dart will offset itself to the left or right so i presume that is taking into account the inaccuracy of throwing darts in general but it'd be nice to know that there's some sort of rhyme or reason behind it maybe having a little bar below which move left to right so you can see the sway of the hand but by the by i'm nitpicking here so let's crack on shall we round one pot look padge up to the hockey here we go i'm gonna go i'm gonna aim for about the n section of strength and see where that runs us nice 50 points good dart so here comes the question how many legs has an arachnid oh that's an easy one that's eight isn't it awesome good start for padge well done well done padge all right palico's up to the hockey what we're going to give him we've got books history mythology bible places art sport food showbiz let's give showbiz a will i'm hoping it's a question on bruce willis or arnold schwarzenegger uh we'll uh, do want to go for 50 i suppose we might as well now aiming at the end before got us about right on the 50 patch so if we go for say around the middle of the e i think that's the best one there oh just about just about good dart who wrote the theme music from the film watership down um that was art garfunkel i think no all right okay <laughs> I, I know he did bright eyes bright eyes burning like fire who wrote the theme music from the film watership down um could it be that i just i got his name wrong what if i just put garfunkel in uh, the, the one thing it said about this is it el is it only accepts single word answers so garfunkel yeah, there we go, Garfunkel. I, I knew I had it right. I just, I've been far too sophisticated with my answer. But hey, that's put Padge forward, so that's good. All right, so we've got books, history, mythology, Bible, places, art, sport, food. I'm going to go with mythology, I think. That's probably my best one here. Uh, we shall pull it across a little, and I think we'll do the same as before. Just aim around the E. 
See how much that offset then? We hit D Bible. That's fine. So we don't get any points for the dart, but we get the question on the Bible because the category is still there, ready to rock. How many days did Jesus spend in the wilderness? That was 40, wasn't it? Yeah, see, I know my stuff. I know my stuff. I listened in, in religious studies. Sometimes. All right, so Palico is up. We have books, history, mythology, places, art, sports, or food. You know what? I'm going to try mythology again, simply because why not? And we're going to do a bit harder this time. Nice. We played it safe. Only went for 30. Good dart. So, name the legendary country that was drowned by the sea. Oh, well, that was Atlantis. These are all relatively easy tonight. I, I've had a couple of practice goes at this, and I was absolutely atrocious in my practice rows. So, uh, this is going well at the moment. So, back to Padge. We have uh, books, history, places, art, sport, or food. Well, places don't change, does it? Where is it? At the bottom. So, we don't want to throw it too hard. So, uh, t just past the T, I guess. Oh, my life. No, that was well off. And that was over the R as well. Oh, dear. All right. Well, Palico is up then, I guess. Uh, I'm going to try place places again. So, about there. You want to aim a little bit higher this time. Wow. Now, you see, for the sake of only moving up a little, that that jumped way out of the way way out of the way i don't know really it's one of them i guess but that's our points and we're on to round two and at this point i'll let jim let you know what's going on we move on to game two here the three dart players compete in three rounds of darts against each other to win for their partner a question and the value of that question is the winning score it's pounds for points we could lose a fortune here so now you've been filled in on what happens in round two, it's time for us to crack on. Obviously in the game show, as he just said, there were three darts players, but we've only got two here. It just means we get through this a lot quicker, that's all. So patch to the hockey. And here's the dart board. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, any amateur dart player would theoretically be aiming towards the bottom of the dart board because that's where the 19 and 17 are. So you can guarantee generally decent outputs of scores we're glory hunters we're going all in balls to the wall let's do it treble 20s all the way so we're gonna we're gonna level ourselves up there um so n got us to around about two thirds of the way up the board so if we go to just past g and see how that works out for padge oh double 20 i'll take it that was ridiculous though that wasn't even all the way okay uh so maybe not so high this time uh, about there N N's better but again see how it got through off and that's what really throws me off uh, I'll try once more a little bit further into the end treble one it's a treble I can live with that so Palico to the hockey here we go All right, so Palico the evil one evil twin how are you going to do we're going to do exactly the same mm, a little bit harder for him Ooh, we were bang on, though, on, on accuracy there. So, up there. Ah, 45. So, who got higher there? Padge did. Excellent. Right, so, this is just a general knowledge question, so we should be okay here, he says. In which of Jane Austen's novels do we find Mr. Knightley? I have no idea. I J Jane Austen's... Um, um, it's a single word answer, so... Single word books... Um, um, I don't know any Jane Austen books other than like Sense and Sensibility and Pride. I'm just going to type in Pride. No, okay. <laughs> I, I, have, I have I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, Jane Austen novels. What single word books are there of Jane Austen? Um, isn't there a girl's name? Um, Mary. No idea. No idea. And we'll never know because it doesn't tell the answer. So there you go. <laughs> You'll have to Google it, I'm afraid. Anyway, on to round two. Let's see if Padge can do any better this time around. Uh, we shall line it up again. Always going for the glory. Uh, so around the centre of the end. 
Oh no, far too low, far too low. So let's try just touching the G. Wow, far too high. Okay, so we're looking at what? About about midway? Like, like two thirds of the M? No, all bloody rubbish that was. Absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. So, uh, well, Palico, you can't do much worse. You just get a 20 and you, you get the question. So let's see how this goes on here. Uh, about there. Yeah, so there we go. He's done it straight away. He's going for points now. He's going for points. So about there, a little bit harder. Is that a 20? Nice, nice. You know, if I got this score, if I can get another 20 here, I'd be happy if I was playing darts and I got 60. I, that, that would be a good round for me. And it's uh, this actually could put Palico ahead. This This could be the end of the world as we know it. For what sport is Eric Bristow famous? Oh, come on. Don't insult my intelligence. It's darts. It's what we're playing. If you if you don't know that, you've got no no excuse to be playing this game. You 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 leave the game straight away if you don't know who Eric Bristow is. Jeez, he's a he's a, a behemoth of the darting sporting thing. <laughs> anyway, back back to Padge. Let's try this again. This isn't going well for Padge. It's at all. It's it's not good at all. Maybe it's a speed thing. Like the quicker you are to aim, the less sway there is. Well, then again, maybe not. 41, though. It's, it's a reasonable score. Palico to the Oki. This is where Palico comes through trumps, I guess. Oh, a 1. That's not good. That's not good. Better. Better. Uh, so if we get another 20 here, this could be a draw. Is it a draw? 41? They both get 41? Yeah, what happens now? Scores equal throw again. Oh, okay. Interesting. Never had to do that before. Patch to the Oki. So we could do with a treble here, Patch. I mean, 20 will do. Oh, treble 5. Nice. Better than a 5. Not as good as a treble 20. 40. Yeah, okay. All right. There's a chance that Palico is going to fail here, simply from the RNG of the throw. That was terrible. We could technically still win. If we get two 20s, though, there's 120. This could really scupper things. Is that a treble? Oh, it is a treble 20. Nice. I mean, bad. It's bad. It's bad that Palico is winning. But he's got to get the question right, mind. The koala bear, the kangaroo, and the budgerigar are, are animals native to which country? Oh, my life. Australia. There we go. Some points there for me. Which means... Have we got another round yet? Palico goes on to the bonus round. Oh, dear. That's not how we meant to play, but that's how it comes out, I guess. So, the bonus round. Now, in, in this game as in the computer game, uh, we're just playing for points. You get 200 points for the bullseye and 10 points, which goes up in increments of 10 every time you get another section. But for the sake of nostalgia, let's get the bonus board up and see what we, we could win, shall we? Here we go. Let's have a look at them tonight. In one. Start the week with a smile with this combined washer-dryer. Two. Home accounts are as simple as pie with this home computer. In three. For hour after hour of family fun, a croquet set. In four. Something to talk about and no walkabout. It's a TV with remote control. In five. For those who really like to get close, a pair of binoculars and case. In six. You'll start every day okay with this radio alarm clock. In Seven. For really perfect pictures, this very latest camera. In eight. Now here's a tasty prize. It's a food hamper. And Bully's special prize. Concert hall reproduction with this MIDI hi-fi with CD player. So there you go. That is what is on offer for us. Or at least that's what I'd like to think would be on offer for us. As I said, it's more boring for us. We're, uh, we're just going for points. But hey-ho. So remember... In the, not in the black, in the red. There's nothing in this game for two in the bed. Or something like that. Not in the black, in the, yeah, something like that. Keep out of the black and in the red. Nothing in this game for two in the bed. 
all the, he's got sayings does our and Jim Bowen. He, he he had sayings, you know. He's, and what was your one? Look at what they could have won. Although we'll probably come to that one soon because <laughs> we're bound to fail in the final. But hey ho. So we're going for as many reds as we can. That's a black. That's not good. Uh, do I go for the bullseye? I suppose we should go for the bullseye first. That's not even on the bloody board. We need to win something. We need to get points of something here. Oh lordy. So the first three darts have all been absolutely ridiculous. Is that a bullseye? No, it's just 10. All right, so that must be the left-hand side. Let's try that again. That's a bullseye. Boom, 100 points. Did I say 200? I meant 100. There we go. So we're just going for extra points now. So if I can get another red section, that means it will get 20 points off that. Nice. And then it's just a case of getting as many more as we can. Oh, that's a good shot. Now, the bonus round was renowned for having... Oh, my life. Average prizes, which you saw, and um, slightly better prizes as well. But there's always some, not so much duff prizes, but um, prizes which um, not many people would fancy. Like a croquet set or a, a pair of binoculars. You know, you don't go on a, a game show to win pairs of binoculars. Or at least I don't, anyway. But uh, not one to judge, but I, I guess, you know, every, every game show's got a budget. And this is back in the 80s, so, you know, it's... Uh, that's not bad at all for me, actually. 200 points on that. Wow. You got 471 in the end. That's not bad at all. Uh, so, yes. So, that was the bonus round. And at this point, usually, what would happen would be that Jim would offer the contestants to either walk away with their prizes, uh, but they could keep their money, or they could gamble all their prizes towards whatever the star prize was. Too slow? All oh, right. So, Palico isn't playing. So I'm guessing Padge is going to do this, and we better do it quickly before it kicks us off the game. There I am, explaining everything. So we need to get over 101 out of four darts to win the game, which will double our points, I believe. So this is a way that Padge can actually come back into the game if he's, uh, if he's uh, so well inclined. We need a treble. I'm not going to lie here. We need a treble. So let's try this. That's, that's, that's not a good start. That's not a good start. I'll try that again. That's better. That's better. Uh, please, treble. Treble five, not what we needed. So, we can't win, is what we're saying here. Uh, we're, we're just throwing for prosperity's sake right now. 20, 60. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So, because we lost in the game, we actually get our, pro, our, our score halved. So, not only is Palico won, but Padge has done worse than he actually did anyway. And there we go. That is the game. Final results. Palico is the winner. And, uh, well, that's it. <laughs> that is the game. Now, the the the, um, the questions, I think that they're in banks of 200 and you can load up more. So it's something that you can carry on and on and on playing with someone else. Obviously, it's a bit boring to play by yourself unless you're just going to answer the questions. But pretty much that is Bullseye for the Commodore 64. I will say at this point that I can distinctly remember a few years ago having a really good bullseye game on my phone. So it might be worth checking the uh, the App Store or the Android App Store and just, just to see if there's something available. And I do believe there's a lot fairer on the throwing as well, which is my big gripe when it comes to this. But that's it. That That is bullseye for the Commodore 64 for you. Uh, I shall throw up the ending of the episode as tradition with the ending of Bullseye. And also, at the end of this, there is a little anecdote, anecdote, get my words out, from Jim Bowen himself about uh, one of the uh, contestants winning the prizes and it not being probably well-suited for them, which I'll put at the end of this video. But I shall say my, my thank yous and exits here. So thank you for watching. As always, a like is appreciated. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy. See us next week. We may keep it up throughout the year as you watch Bullseye every Sunday. See you soon. You can't beat a bit of bully. Bye. The worst one we ever had was when a guy who appeared, he played the game in a wheelchair. 
and he got to the final. He was called Mick from Manchester, a really grand lad, and his brother-in-law was answering the questions. And he got to the final, and, uh, and the brother-in-law threw, and he got 68, something like that, a good score, and the guy in the wheelchair came in and slid his chair sideways onto the board, and he was a good player, he was a county player, because Greeny had auditioned him, I think, and Greeny had told me he's a really good player, so th we knew they were going to win the prize. And Greeny, he, he, he knew all about darts. Our producer, Peter Harris, he watched a lot of Judy Garland films, and he wasn't into darts. He did a bit of soft furnishing and making cushions, but he didn't know a lot about darts, you see. So Greeny was there to say, Pete, Pete, the prize will go now. And, and Harris could then get Pete Harris, who was in my book of heroes, fabulous man, could get a word backstage, ready, the prize is going to go, because they couldn't see. So he, he got this 68, whatever it was. Uh, and Mick came in the wheelchair and threw the first dart. And when he threw the first dart, it's something like 18. He needed something like 10 with two darts to win the prize. And, and suddenly he's going to throw the second dart and Harris is screaming down our head. Stop him throwing bloody darts, stop him. And we said, well, we'll stop him throwing darts. So we stopped and we said to Mick, sorry Mick, we've got a technical problem. We went around the back and Harris is there. He said, Look, it's, it's the star prize. I said, well, what's the problem? He said, it's a three-piece suite, a leather three-piece suite for a guy in a wheelchair. He's got a chair he can move. The last thing he wants is 3,000 quid of the immovable leather. So this is why Harris was the governor. He said, right, change it. It was the first show we were doing that night. Change it to the second prize. It was a holiday. So we said, thank God for that. So he said to the VT guys, right, when he's going to win this. When he runs, run the VT of the holiday. Give him the holiday. So I said, right, so he's winning the holiday. Boom, we go. We go back, right, sorry, Mick. Off we go. He throws the next dart. Boom, yes, you won the prize. You run the VT of the holiday. It's a skiing holiday. And, and it's the look on the guy's face, we look at unbelievable.